the, uh, the federal census resulted in um, a scramble to print multilingual ballots for us here. Um, and it's a reminder that we do have a very large um, immigrant population in the city and growing. How are you working with particularly the Asian population in business development, in coordination of neighborhood development, and how much of the new establishments that you were referring to, various shops here and there, different parts of the city, are, uh, are minority owned or Asian owned? Um, well, the latter first. I'm not sure of the percentage, but certainly uh, many of the new shop owners, whether they're hair salons or restaurants, uh, or uh, cleaners or what have you, uh, are certainly a number of them are, are of Asian descent, so um, I couldn't tell you the percentage offhand. Mm -hmm. uh, but we work well with the, uh, the business community, uh, whether they're Asian or they're uh, yeah, Irish background. Um, our license board has been very responsive. Our building department and our instruction has worked with a lot of folks um, in expansion or coming into a shop. And this, under the zoning guideline, it gives um, more latitude uh, a new code to the building inspector, whereby we don't have to send everybody to the zoning board of appeals. That you know, we use changes in a district. If we use it, it's not an adverse effect uh, on that area. We can we can grant those, and he's done a number of those. Again, showing our uh, open for business uh, type attitude. So we do have a, uh, a very good Asian uh, American committee um, headed up by Betty Al from my office that, that do a lot of outreach. Um, I think we <coughs> certainly. I live. Literally two blocks out of the Alpha Downs, uh, Plenty Business District, and I've seen a lot of those changes over the years. And as as a resident, I'm always using the local businesses. Um, use the cleaners there my whole life, uh, the fish store, and all. And, and I'm seeing more um, more Asians using uh, some of those traditional um, stores that they wouldn't otherwise use. When I first experienced the Asian influx 25, 30 years ago, they were still doing the shopping in Chinatown and bringing it home. Mm -hmm. They've now established in the community, their real presence in the community, they've established businesses that they use, but also businesses that every resident would use. Uh, the local hardware store in North Quincy is owned by Danny Hardware, an Asian gentleman who's a great guy. Uh, so we've come to know them. Uh, so we work with them. We work like any other business through their issues. I know the Chamber has done some outreach with Betty, uh, specifically um, to the Asian shop owners and business owners to get them a little bit more involved in the Chamber and the community. Um, they tend to uh, you know, pay attention to business, work hard, and, and don't really get too involved um, in some of the other parts of, of the organizational chamber or perhaps some of the other things we do as a city that like, we'd like to see more involved. So we have a ways to go, I think, but uh, I think, you know, when you look at the history of Quincy, you go back nearly 100 years, it was 30% immigrants. Today it's 30% immigrants. It doesn't change much. The face is bad. Uh, but it's, uh, it's still a great city, and it's been very well received. Mayor, a little bit over a month ago, the uh, Civil Service Commission uh, took issue with your appointment of the fire chief in a very extensive report that, that uh, criticized a lot of aspects of how the decision was made. And yet, it sounds like the, uh, your decision to appeal was so quick that it, you had come to the determination that it was a no-brainer that we had to appeal this. What makes you so confident, given the points that were made in that report, that you're going to be uh, proven right in this case? Well, I believe that civil service clearly overstepped their bounds. They can't substitute their judgment for the appointing authority. Um, there's a process, um, and they have certainly have a role. They send me three names under the law. Um, the first name, the top to, to the, the list, but a pretty good margin. Um, at the interview with Bruce Kennedy, basically saying, I don't think I have enough admin experience to fulfill the job. That left me with two separated by one point, and they went with the, uh, the choice that uh, had more time on the job and had more time in each of the ranks uh, right up the line, lieutenant, captain, and deputy. And uh, I think it was the right choice. We, we had a panel. We asked all three candidates the same nine questions, looked at backgrounds, and uh, I think we made a good choice. I, uh, and I do think we'll be, uh, I think we'll win that in the end. Um, because of just, just as I stated, they can't substitute their judgment for us. And, um, I think we'll be successful in that. I mean, at the end of the day, as I said publicly, if, if, if they want to pick the chief, then they just should send me one name. Well, hiring and your decisions about hiring have seemed to have been a repetitive theme of at least your opponents um, over the past four years. I wonder if you'd speak a little, too, 
variety of hires from Nick Pulido to Mr. Ramondi to Fire Chief and a variety in between. Um, one, individually, yes, you have justified them, but in retrospect, would you do anything different? Do you think this is what you're going to do going forward? And do you think that the, that the questions raised had any validity whatsoever? Um, I think the proof is in the pudding. I think production is what counts. And I put people in the places that have provided uh, great leadership, um, great organization, and uh, production. And I'd love to talk to them. I'd love to talk to a number of them that I've never mentioned. Um, you know, when I took office, the high school project was more than $4 million over budget. Uh, it was behind time, and we had a plumber overseeing the project with the city. Uh, we put in place a director of public building and maintenance who was a structural engineer with an architectural background. The minute he sat at the table with the architects and the contractors for that school, things changed drastically. Um, he provided incredible insight, oversight with his background on that project, and as you know, we brought the project in under budget and on time. That's one example. Uh, I'll go to our downtown development. Jim Fancy is my chief of staff, had 22 years uh, in Merrill Lynch as a senior manager, overseeing a lot of deals, a lot of funds, and uh, he brought with him a tremendous background in our, in our work on the downtown project. My Madam Treasurer, Debbie Coughlin, 28 years in Gillette Finance, um, terrific person, terrific work ethic, and a great background. Now, it wasn't municipal background, but I like to have the mix. And uh, she's adjusted so well to the municipal side and, and done great work. As you may recall, when we first took office, our sewer and water enterprise fund was in complete disarray. It had not been um, uh, put in proper place for starters. DOR came out and told us we had to fix it. You know, I, I hired Mike Coffey, who was a senior uh, project manager for Verizon for 25 years. And he came in, he had tremendous numbers got and did a phenomenal job straightening out the business aspects of the soil and water. So we've had a number of appointments that had public sector background, some with private sector background that came in and worked very well. Uh, my purchasing agent, uh, Kathleen Hoban, is, a, uh, is an attorney. And with her, um, you know, with that background, it's allowed us to move more efficiently in the purchasing department with much less um, um, discussions up in the law office because we have a lawyer at the helm there. The paper was working much smoother. We haven't had any bid objectives, uh, objections uh, over the last three years. She's done a phenomenal job. So, you know, I'm, I'm proud of the work each have each have done in their areas. Uh, Nick Polio uh, vastly impressed me uh, with his knowledge on budget and the schools uh, when I first took office. Uh, and I know he wasn't going to stay that long. I certainly would would not have made that decision. Uh, but Nick remains a friend, and uh, you know, he, he did some great things in that first year. Uh, of really changing the budget format and putting things in place. Uh, and now with, uh, with Mark Kavanaugh at the helm, I'm very, very comfortable with his experience, uh, both in the private sector uh, and in state government. Um, and he's done a phenomenal job, a steady hand at the helm. So we have a good mix. Um, you know, the Dan Ramondi thing has come up once or twice during the campaign. Um, you know, I, what I saw, and, and, and Larry Prendeville, who I put there when I first was elected, uh, had 22 years of modern continental, of, of road construction, bridge construction. And, uh, and Larry did a tremendous job, but I, I could see the weak part of Larry was the admin side. He loved to be in the field, was good in the field, made good decisions in the field. But come with that job, it, the commissioner is the great burden of the administrative side, and that's to deal with all the regulatory agencies. And it's far more complicated today, dealing with EPA and DEP, uh, you know, all the uh, the vendor contracts, um, the construction contracts, the employee contracts, the union dealing with all of them. I think the legal background of, of Ramadi has been tremendous, number one. Uh, two is um, his work ethic is second to nobody. Um, he puts the hours in, he pays attention, he does his homework. Uh, and I'm thrilled with the progress he's made to date. Um, he's 22 years in, uh, in public elective office, uh, or directly with the city, with the council, has been tremendous. Um, he was the uh, county treasurer for a period of time, so he managed the budget, he managed people, and he managed investments for a period of time. So he brings all of that background with him. And, and I've always said in my appointees, I have you know, confidence, uh, loyalty to the city, and passion for the city. And, and I think in each of those uh, appointments, I've, I've seen that. 
Do you equate, or do you see other people equating that loyalty to the city to read friends of mine? I don't think so. I mean, I never knew Mark Cavanaugh. You know, we, we advertised that job. We, we uh, had a number of candidates, and it was narrowed down, and narrowed down to three for me, and, and I made a selection. Uh, Frank Tremontosi, I had never met. Uh, he's our engineer for infrastructure in downtown. Um, I never met before we had an interview with him, but I knew of his background, I knew of his uh, abilities, and knew of his relationships at the federal and state level, which would help us navigate the downtown project through those agencies. So, no, I think we've, uh, I think we've advertised when we've needed to. Um, you know, I didn't, I didn't need to advertise for a job like Eric Kant because I found a, a great candidate in his background. So, uh, it's been a mix, a mix of public and private, and sometimes we've advertised and sometimes we haven't. Uh, at the end of the day, whoever sits in that seat is the appointing authority and uh, can make decisions uh, based on what they feel is best for the city. Do you do things differently now than you did four years ago? Oof. You stumped me on that one. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I, I guess um, perhaps uh, maybe more efficient than I was four years ago. I mean, it, you know, the first year, for, though I had, you know, a lot of municipal experience, um, it takes you a little time and all the new people you have you brought on board, a little time to navigate and get to know the, the city, uh, the budget, and, and how things operate. Uh, I think we're moving more efficiently, more quickly on things, and uh, it's never quick enough for me. I mean, one of the frustrating parts is the wheels of government do move slowly, although I'm proud of the successes we've had with whether it's a new roadway, whether it's Quincy Highway, whether it's Central, or some of the other projects. Um, so it's just, uh, I, I think probably I'm um, maybe a little less patient with uh, some of my own department heads and people because I want to th see things move more quickly. That may be the difference. Kind of on the same note as you were answering that, whether it was this year or many years down the line, what advice would you give to your, uh, the, the next person to take this job, uh, the, the pitfall that you, uh, stumbled into that you would not want them to stumble into or something else that uh, you wish you had been told when you took the job? Well, I, I think that, um, that, you know, the advice right off the bat would be because um, it's a two-year term, you're always looking over your shoulder. Uh, or the potential is you're looking over your shoulder. And my advice would be not to do that, to, to make the best business decisions possible for the city going forward. And um, though I think a four-year term would allow for more comfort in those decisions. Um, it is what it is, and, and, and the temptation would be not to make those tough decisions. Uh, you know, uh, two years ago, many of my advisors suggested uh, don't do central. You know, we're in difficult economic times. Be careful this downtown thing. Uh, you know, the, the job is to, to, to lead, follow, or get out of the way. I mean, you, it's a leadership position. It's uh, a position you're able to bring a lot of people together to get things done. Um, and, uh, you know, my advice, my advice would be to always, you know, make the best decision possible. And I, and I remember the words of my father a long time ago, because he's, he's been dead a long time now, but um, you can do all your due diligence, you can do, um, get as much information as you possibly can, but at the end of the day, your you, gut tells you what the right decision is. Um, and I found that to be true, uh, and I would suggest uh, that to whoever my successor would be someday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Any hope of uh, resurrecting that idea of stretching it out to a four-year term? It's funny. Uh, people bring it up to me everywhere, uh, whether I'm knocking doors, whether I'm in an event. You know, you're up again. You know, why isn't this a four-year? I said, well, it's, it's the way the charter is. And people ask how it could be changed and explain how it could be changed. But uh, I knew the rules getting in, so I'm not complaining at all. Uh, but someday it probably should be put on the ballot so the public can vote on it and make the charter change if they desire. I'd rather go that route than the legislative route. I'd rather let the people make that decision. And based on what I've heard, if it was ever on the ballot, my guess is it would pass.